All right, so let's welcome along Shannon Mitchell. It's great to have you here today. How are Thank you? you. You're all good? All good. Thanks for having me. No problems. Okay, so let's get into it. Tell me, how did you first get into golf? So I was sitting at home one October uh, evening, I think it would have been a couple of years ago, and I saw a, a local <laughs> Facebook post uh, on the local Hibiscus Coast page for um, a She Loves Golf um, coaching sessions. Um, and it was a Tuesday night, um, five o'clock uh, for about an hour, and of, of, often it went longer, <laughs> especially when we had a wine afterwards. But um, yeah, so that was with um, Jenna Gainford at uh, Golf Harbour. And, you know, Golf Harbour can be a daunting course. And I guess I didn't really understand that at the time. I just rocked up like, how, here we go. Let's play golf. So it was awesome. So there's a big group of um, beginners. Um, most of us had not picked up a club. And, and yeah, we spent those Tuesday nights together, oh, which was awesome. You were there in that um, very first course? So there would have been probably on average about six each week. Um, and I actually have made a, we've got a foursome that we still play, um, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, so those ladies I met that first night and yeah, we're, we're still playing. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. I think that's probably one of the favourite things I love about golf is um, connecting with other women, making new friends, creating new friendships and being able to just ring up somebody or, or text somebody and go, um, are you free for a game of golf? And that's either yeah or no, yes or no, you know? Yep, yep, absolutely. Great. So um, so you and I also met at one of the um, She Love Golf events in Pupuki, I think it was. It was. So these have obviously helped your game, but... Um, the actual She Loves Golf event, what did it in, include and sort of, you know, how's it helped that get your game? So I've played quite a few now. Um, I try, it, I think the best part about She Loves Golf and the events that are set up is it's not just beginners and it's not just pros. It's, it's everybody. Um, and it's being able to go to different courses, uh, like Pupuki, for example, I've always wanted to play and I've had, you know, my dad used to play there a long time ago and and you hear the stories about Pupuki, the goat track, and, and it really played up to its name, for sure. Um, but I, I, what I like about them is there's no pressure. Um, I think, um, especially playing an Ambrose-type format or um, those kind of things for me take off that pressure. So it's not about, because I'm always trying to beat myself, I'm always trying to beat my last score, but um, at those events, it's fun, it's social, there's new people, there's old people, there's, um, you know, it, it's just a good time and you just play. Yeah, and I guess the good thing about the Ambrose, especially when you're beginning, is that you're not, I know when I first started, I was sort of spanking it around the golf course, so I'd play a lot among, in the trees by myself, but yes. with these sort of, the way that the She Loves Golf and the Ambrose plays, you all hit it off, um, and then you all come back together and take the best ball and then, you know, then you have another go, which is really good. So you're never sort of feeling like you're out there by yourself or and everybody's struggling the same. As that's, your... that's true. You know, usually I play with my dad um, or my brother and, you know, they're, they're better than me for sure. They hit it further than me. I'm getting there with dad. He's starting to feel the pressure of me catching up behind him, definitely. But um, it's nice to have that social aspect. And I think that's why I, I'll continue to go to any event that I can because um, it's it's social and you you get to I've I've got new friends you know friends of mine that come along to events now that haven't played golf much, um, which is is awesome as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. and I th I think the beauty of it is um, I love going to play a new course with with the lack of pressure. You know, you can go and play Takapuna a million times, or you can go and play Fangaporoa. But going somewhere different, like I've played Omaha Beach now three times and I love that course. I wow. really do. Yeah, yeah, I've really gotten to like it. So We went up and played there and it's an, such an interesting course because you kind of like, you play and then you cross over the road. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think playing a golf course for the very first time, I struggle with because I struggle with directions at the best of times. You know, I can get lost yeah. <laughs> with a road map, Google Maps, I get lost. Um but you kind of don't know where you're going or where you're hitting the ball. But um, so that's why I 
I like to play it a few times. Um, but um, yeah, I think it is awesome. I remember playing Takapuna probably 10 times when I was first beginning, which is a great, great course to begin because it's nice and flat and walking yeah. 18 holes is actually quite tiring. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to play something different is, is great. Yeah, Takapuna's, I think for me, has become my um, safety net. Like I feel safe there and um, I see people I know there all the time. It's quite, you know, it's quite social. My cousins are often there. I play there with my dad. Um, my dad lives in Tauranga, so um, we'll often meet up when he's in Auckland and play Takapuna. Um, yeah. It's very centralized if we're, if we're on the shore it's not far to come over from from the city yeah yeah, yeah. that's right so um golf tell me what you love about it what i love about golf so i've always been a sports person i've always played a lot of sports but cricket is my one true love um and i still play cricket um cricket has messed with my golf for sure um it's you know jenna in fact both my coaches, so I've, I've, I don't see Jenna anymore, but I see Emma Fanny quite a lot, and I highly recommend her. She's amazing. Um, yeah, we've talked about how my cricket swing is really impacting my golf swing, and, you know, I can't pick between them both, unfortunately, not yet anyway. Um, so, yeah, so I think I definitely wanted to look for something I could do with Dad. Um, we play cricket together our whole lives, but dad's um a pretty good golfer and I think it's really yeah it's really brought us close. not that we needed to be brought closer together but our our relationship is is just booming because of golf um I think he's super proud um and it was that little push I think that made me go that Tuesday night like I could go and play golf with dad I mean I've played golf with dad before but not well um and I think that <laughs> yeah yeah um, and you know golf is is very mental um, so it's quite nice to go out and shut off from everything else for a couple of hours and 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 hit some balls yeah definitely and I love that connection with your dad and I think sometimes you know for, for people there is that connection um, you know I I joined because I wanted to spend more time with my husband and something that we we could share together yeah uh, we've both been sporty throughout our lives but always in different different places um, and other friends are connecting with their with their mums, you know, and, and mm. other family members to actually do something together. So, you know, there's a great um, of bringing people together. Golf can really do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So we talked about your story and um, just wondered if you want to share that. My story... Um, yeah I, I guess um, COVID has had a huge impact on everybody um, I separated and um, I have sort of had a bit of a career change and I'm a full-time university student um, which thankfully brings me lots of um, free time you don't go to uni very often I've discovered um, <laughs> it's shocked me actually you think full-time uni you'll be there every day and you know lectures and all sorts it's not really like that um but yeah so it's given me a bit of free time which is awesome so I spend quite a lot of time at the driving range um which is awesome but yeah I think golf has always been in my family um my yeah obviously my dad my brother my uncle um are all pretty good golfers and I have this amazing woman um, my great aunt who is not with us anymore but she was an amazing golfer and I'm sad that she can't see me um sort of carry on her her passion she you know she I think she played off about a seven um in Wanganui she was a very good golfer she was a she was an amazing woman but um yeah a lot of people will remember her for her golf so I sort of have that I'm really big on that and that legacy and taking that on um and my daughter actually got golf clubs for her birthday this year so um <laughs> Fingers crossed she wants to keep it up. Um, I'm going to get her some coaching with Luke. Nice, yeah. And um, the, From Golf HQ? Yeah, yeah. So that Luke and Emma, uh, fiance, yeah. So there's this big connection of, you know, people and it's... Small community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, definitely keen to get Eleanor along um, 
and have and you know I don't know whether she wants me to coach her I don't I don't think I'm the right person um I think she's very like me she's quite competitive um so yeah if we can get her along and she can meet other kids that are into it as well um hopefully that will just sort of spur her on oh, absolutely so yeah. um I I know that um Golf New Zealand is actually trying to you know do a lot of work with futures uh futures golf and mm. is that the program that Emma runs futures futures yeah um I think and Jenna did as well at Golf Harbour um I do think you know what it's something that really I think about a lot you know young girls um in any sport young girls getting into any sport uh, you know what how can we make that easier or better um especially you know I started my life playing boys cricket and boys football um and now I play men's cricket because there's no women's right here you know so I've always been one of the boys um playing with the boys but I I think how do girls get into golf you know is it because their dad plays or their mum plays or their brother plays um it, that there's definitely a um a gap there I think so you know if girls don't know that they a lot of girls don't even know that golf exists probably yeah or yeah. you know it's not a sport you play at school or um yeah especially because it's individual yeah and it's definitely not uh, a sport that you know, you, you go to school and you play cricket or, or netball or, or touch or rugby or, or whatever it is. But golf's not one of those um, skills that you, you go and learn. No. And maybe that's because it's, it can be an expensive golf uh, sport, sorry, to, to get into. And that could Absolutely. be some roadblocks. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can um, sit down and, and work something out. And yeah. And maybe encourage, you know, young woman into, into golf and, and create a little futures program here somewhere yeah I mean it's it's Eleanor I know you know I've got I've got my own little one and and I think that um you know I know there are organizations out there and I think Love Golf will definitely be on board um you know how do we get more Maori girls playing how do we get more Pacifica girls playing like um let's make it accessible and it is it probably is financial burdens um and you know but there's a golf course everywhere right so um and I think if the golf courses open their doors, you know, I think if Golf Harbour opened their doors to a whole bunch of, you know, rosé loving women, and I, they, I think we all loved it. You know, it was quite daunting when I think about it, and it's still probably my favourite course to play. It's not a golf course I've played yet, but it is one that I definitely intend to to get out to. It's worth it, absolutely. Um, you'll have to. We'll have to play Friday nights. Um, they do sort of a ladies and men's league on a Friday night in the summer. Um, and you, um, women will play one, you know, front nine and men will play back nine and then you'll swap the next week. So we'll get a week where it's back nine okay. and, um, yeah, cause you can't beat the back nine at Gulf Harbour. It's, and it's not as hard as you think it's going to be when I've played other courses. There's a lot of bunkers. <laughs> There's a lot of bunkers. <laughs> my sandwich yeah that's the one <laughs> so um what is one thing that you would like help with um I think for me it's that I've I've struggled with my confidence because you know you don't I want to play every week or I want to play a couple of times a week um and you have you have to get over that um stepping stone of the confidence of of joining a club so for me I really want to push myself to join somewhere this summer um I've currently got a love golf membership which you know gives me affiliate fees and and I've started handing in cards which took me a long time to get the confidence to do that as well um but I, I want you know I want to start beating myself every time and that's my challenge now so I think for me it's hard to know which club to join um Every club's got its own pros and cons. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to sort of make those decisions now. Yeah, and I guess mm-hmm. I guess for us, like we just recently joined up to Whangapurua and it was convenience. Um, we were going to go to Teka, yeah. um, but it's a, so much easier to jump in the car and to get down the road to the golf course compared to sort of, you know, 20, 25 minutes, depending on traffic. <laughs> yeah yeah true and it's I mean you can always it, those courses are always going to be there the takapunas but I, I agree Whangapurua seems to be the draw card for me um I've got friends that 
let play there. It's more social. Um, I've always said, oh, I'm never going to play any competitions. Always. That's from the minute I started playing. Oh, no, I'm never going to play competition. But I could hazard a guess that I will be um, as soon as I join somewhere. Absolutely. And just everybody has yeah. monthly, uh, has monthly, monthly opens kind of thing. You just all sort of yeah. put your name in and, and give it a go. That's it. And you just have to step over. I think that's the hard part. You're standing on the on the edge and you just have to take that little step forward. Yeah, and um, I think it's, a lot of it's a mental game, you know. Mm. Um, a lot of it we play up in our head. Like I should I should do I should have done this, I should have done that. Um, I should be better. Um, the shoulda coulda woulda. Should sure, yeah, that's golf for sure. And as soon as you sort of relax, everything falls into place, really, isn't it? You know, like I can get so frustrated and just duff the ball or something like that and after a couple of times I just get up there and just smack the ball and it actually goes because I've kind of had enough and I'm just like right I'm just gonna hit it yeah yeah all right you've got to stop the voices I there's too many you know I, I hear all my coaches I hear dad I hear my brother you know everyone wants to give you advice because there's always ways to make it better um I have an epic slice with my driver epic um and you know I blame cricket so um but you know, everyone wants to give me a tip. You know, I've played with a couple of old, you know, you join up with a group or a group's joined up with us and some old fella wants to give you some advice. <laughs> you know, hold your hands this way and do that with that hand. And oh, I'm like, God, I can't, all these things, yeah. you know. Um, and I think with, with Emma most recently, so I, I've continued to have lessons in coaching and I, I would say I'll be doing that for a long time. Yeah, highly um, need it, don't we? Yeah, oh, it just, and you know, people like Emma and Jenna, they're making it affordable and accessible. Um, it's not, you know, you're not paying $150 for a lesson with some, you know, um, some pro, um, even though these women are, you know, PGA pros, that it's, um, they just, yeah, that Emma's take, we've taken it right back. And I just try and think about connection. So that's all I'm doing now. Every time I hit the ball, I'm not thinking about, anything else apart from connection where my driver head is hitting my ball and that's it she said don't worry about anything else yeah yeah you know? I, I have to admit I, I started with Luke and um got four lessons and it was the best thing that I've ever done because my husband can't tell me what to do because that's <laughs> just the way I am <laughs> yeah yeah it's a lot of relationships um and I think getting those basics right that set up right right at the beginning was was a game changer yeah absolutely I mean we spend a lot of time in Jenna's lessons around greens and in bunkers so my short game um I, I love I'm always really confident around the green um it's just and I've said to Emma you know my ne my next goal and it's good to have goals right um as good as you're going to get you can keep playing but have another goal so um for me it's definitely that sort of first fairway shot I really want to work on yeah and I and I must admit just in this lockdown like just before the lockdown I'm not sure if you listen to my other podcast but before this lockdown I was almost ready to quit golf it was just I was frustrated I was almost in tears because I put so much pressure on myself to be better at it yeah. um, and so that little break and then a bit of practice we've just got a net that we set up here and then when I went back, I had changed my mental game and it was like, okay, what do I just want to focus on for the next month? And it was just those long, that long drive and my fairway shots. Yep. I just want to try and get to the green. Yep. Yep. And, and less than so many. Yeah. And that was all, all it was, was just to get there for par. You know, if I can get onto the green for par and um, a two part, then I was at 36 and I was happy I'm happy with 36 I mean I'm still yep. right at the beginning so yeah 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 that was Jenna Jenna always I can hear her all the time I mean Jenna and I play now as friends right so um and I, I remember her um vividly sort of fear I know I think you know really good women around my own age I think do struggle to find you know ladies to play with because it's yeah, they don't want to play with the boys or play off the black tees or whatever. Um, she just wants to go and have a hit as well, right? So, um, but yeah, she said, if you can, every shot, you know, when you're beginning, every hole, you're aiming for six. If you yeah. can get six, 
at every hole, it's all going to balance out and then you just need to get better and better, right? And you'll have a really good one or a really bad one. Um, and so, yeah, she's in my mind kind of with that um, always, I think. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Six and under. Game after I just took the pressure off myself and, and thought, oh, if I can get there by four, what can get there by four? You know, and then a two-part. Now I just need to work on my putting. <laughs> yeah see so I know yeah yes that, and that's good you've it's got you've got to have a goal and yeah. yeah definitely awesome okay so how do you think we can help connect women and golf I think what's happening is good I think um love golf are doing great yeah. um it's it's interesting to see how the dynamic has changed you know I've met um there's there's girls out there younger than me um, with big social media followings that are playing golf now. Um, and it's not really the celebrities. It's not the, you know, um, Daisy Dag or Tony street, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's amazing that they're out there advocating, but it's, you know, it is kind of normal girls um, and they're sharing their journeys as well, which I think is cool. Um, yeah. I really like seeing that. And I think that makes it a lot more relatable and accessible, um, especially for the, the 20 and 30 somethings um I'm almost out of that age group so you know <laughs> uh going to the masters or something but um you know um I think that does help um and I think these events are, are really good the she loves golf events just need to keep going um I think they could probably be advertised more and shared more and um how how that happens I don't know we all have to play a part in that I guess um probably the clubs too um yeah <clears throat> it's but, having it's having the people um to get get it up and running i guess they because there's only a couple of them at, at golf new zealand that actually run it so i think yeah so yeah be everywhere <laughs> exactly but you know i think if the clubs are on board um and you've got these the ambassadors you know use them get them out there if you can have the celeb a celebrity i don't you know People don't want to be called a celebrity, but if you could have a celebrity or, or a bit, a little bit more pulling power, yeah. um, to come along, you know, um, that will get people along that wouldn't usually come, or that might help someone make a call to come. Um, and I think that you know, people are going to. I know girls that turn up with their husbands' clubs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that's okay, right? In the beginning, it's yeah. just. I think you can even sometimes borrow um, clubs from the club. Yeah, and I think that just you know I've I've not had Dad gave me a second hand set you know when I first started playing and um, I've got my own now but um, yeah you know that's probably a barrier you know um, everyone knows you need a a bag and a you know a, a visor and balls and you yeah know, that can be quite overwhelming um, definitely to start but I mean once you've got it it's great right because you use it totally all the time. But yeah. yeah, for somebody just starting out has trying to figure out, well, am I actually even going to like playing golf? Yeah. Um, we just need to be able to come up with ideas to be able to just yeah, make that easier, that transition into golf easier. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you could have buddies, you know, like um, I would 100% put my hand up and say, use me. Um, I'll come along to an event and I'll buddy up with someone new and they can use my clubs, you know, or get, you know, whatever. Um, that's, you know, I think sometimes you do get thrown out on the course. I remember my first time at Omaha, we were completely lost, completely lost, no idea where we were. Um, <laughs> and there are fun sometimes, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah. Well, that, it's not very well, you know, like there's no markers. Yeah. So I'm like, where are we? Which hole are we on? And you're trying to look at, read the card and it's upside down. It was raining that day, I think. Um, and I had sort of club members, ladies out on the course, but um you and Emma couldn't be everywhere you know that the the people organizing can't be everywhere so I I'd put my hand up and say use me absolutely um, um I'd be happy to go along and and encourage and chat and and yeah yeah interesting that's interesting mm. we'll, we'll mm. have to talk more about that yeah so um what is something that you want to share with our listeners <laughs> I mean, I've talked about, you know, women and girls feeling more confident to get involved. So that's something I think we can 
take away from this and maybe work on together or you know talk, I'd, I'd, I've written some notes and I just said can we create a social network um and you know um like you said can you just text a friend or um have a group chat who wants to go and have a have a game or um because that's sort of I do struggle with that myself you know people are out working and one of my girlfriends has just had a baby and um now I've got all the time in the world uni finishes in a couple of weeks and now what am I going to do everyone says what are you going to do I'm going to play golf yeah <laughs> but there's you know who's out there <laughs> or and then I could come and play any day yeah exactly yeah and that's that's going to be great right so um I don't want to play by myself so that's I do, actually sometimes I go out just to to practice and I might just do especially during the day because it's, sometimes it's not quite as busy and I'll do one two and three and I'll repeat it or I'll do one one two one two one two one two one two, one, two just so that I can practice and try and get better and just kind of figure out my line and why was I going there or why was I doing that yeah and one's quite a tough hole at Whangapurua as well, really. You think of that slope and... Yeah, well, I think it's always that you've never really warmed up properly. Mm-hmm. You start on the first and it's kind of like... I try to always get there a little bit beforehand, but with COVID, you're not actually supposed to get there beforehand to warm yeah. up everything's All the nets and everything are just locked off. But, yeah. yeah, I think it's just that you're not warm enough. So true. I always say I need nine holes to warm up. Yeah. And then I'll play another nine. <laughs> So, um, you know, I've, I've, I've gone and played the orchard um, at Wainui a couple of times by myself and I quite enjoy that because it's not a, it's not long or particularly challenging. So that's quite fun. I quite enjoy that. Par three and fours, is it? Just all par threes. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So I think I got round, the last time I played by myself, I got round at about 45 minutes. I was pretty much running with the <laughs> trundler. <laughs> I was the only one there and it was... Yeah, oh, look, it's good, it's good fitness, you know. Um, and I can take my daughter there. She loves playing there, so. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a nice sort of little course, just, you know, path three. It's not too long. Yeah, oh, I think it's really good practice. It's quite interesting watching my dad play there. He gets quite frustrated. You know, men just men tend to want to just hit the ball, but women, we we think about it a lot deeper. We analyse it a lot more. And I watched her dad get very frustrated um, <laughs> not being able to smash the ball. Or it just has to go down a couple of clubs or something. So yeah, I think it's. I mean, it's really good for your short game, right? So yeah. um, right. Hmm. that's awesome. So let's just wrap it up with telling me your favourite course. I mean, Gulf Harbour is pretty hard to beat. Um, it's true what they say. You sort of. I don't think I realised um, how beautiful it actually is around the back. Um, the sixteenth hole is just magical. Um, we went up there after one of the She Loves Golf um, nights and we had a few bottles of bubbles and we stood on the green and there were dolphins in the bay below us, you know, um, and the sun was setting and it was just, yeah, we've got some beautiful photos of that actually and I, I always look back at those and think, wow. Um, so Golf Harbour, you know, um, I can't see myself joining the club, which is almost a shame because it is a beautiful course, but, um, you know, it is what it is. But so my dad is a, a member of a little club called Rana Park in Tauranga, and um, it's just gorgeous. It's a little nine hole. It's looked after so well. Everybody's, it's quite a social little course. Um, and, you know, it's challenging enough um, for me. And I, I love that little course. So I play there quite a lot. Um, so, yeah. I mean, ask me again in a year. I'll ha- probably say something different. Because there's so many different courses, right? And it's only with the ones that we've managed to play so far. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And what about your favourite club? Oh, see, this is a toss-up again. So I, I love my five iron. I think that... Um, my five iron is probably my one of my favorite clubs um i tend to get good distance good height and it always goes straight so whatever i'm doing with my irons and we've broken this down in coaching sessions you know like emma will say to me why can't you hit your driver like hit your iron yeah your club position is perfect and i I said i don't know i get the big driver in my hand and i don't know what i'm doing yeah um smack it though don't you because you think that's kind of what it is yeah 
yeah absolutely but uh, you know that's that is what it is so yeah love the five iron um but my pitching wedge you know um i i've we have a great understanding and um it was yeah like i said we spent a lot of time um chipping and uh, around greens and i've enjoyed that got my first birdie with my pitching wedge chipped straight into the hole so it's pretty good um so yeah they're probably my two favorites but again ask me again in a year i would have changed my mind definitely and you did say your short game is 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 pretty good so yeah nice so what about golf balls what do you play uh at the moment i'm just playing with um like callaway super soft um i usually go for anything bright um pink maybe orange yellow kind of sticks out a little bit better um because usually i'm playing with dad so i like to you know because i'm dry i'm driving up behind him now so i like to stand and take a photo of two balls pretty close to each other he doesn't like that so yeah nice. i mean i'm not fussy on balls to be honest not yet um I think today I'm going out to play today. I think I'll be using all the uh, dirty old balls in the bottom of my bag because I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> They've got, you know, their uses too, don't they? Those throwaways. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Burner balls. Yeah, yeah. All right. And what about your favourite quote? Oh, I don't really have a favourite quote. Um, you know, if you think about what all the greats say, it's usually about what I've been taught myself, you know, and Jenna from the beginning, you know, you the only person you want to beat is yourself, you know, um, don't get too competitive. She, I think she could see it in my eyes, you know, and I do want to beat people I'm playing with for sure. And one day that's, you know, um, I hope I can beat dad. I'm, ch I'm, I'm getting there, but um, yeah, I did see a good one today. What was it? Um, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was something about, my doctor told me to take lots of iron and, and live off greens or something and I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was a good mm. Nice. Well, um, Shannon, I really appreciate you dropping by and um, just sort of having a chat about, you know, golf and, and I love your passion and the way that you want to encourage women and youth as well. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'll really look forward to chatting to you more about that. Yes, yeah, I'm sure we can. I've always got lots of ideas. Um, Ideas. when it comes to that uh, yeah just I just see potential you know and um, I want people to have I feel like it was almost easy for me to step into it but I had family support I had um, you know really good coaching support and not everyone's going to have that um, I was given a set of clubs by dad you know but not everyone's going to have that so how can we make it you can't go out and spend three thousand dollars you know you think what golf costs um, yeah. really and um I don't know whether that's going to change or, you know, it's it's like you can't even find nice clothes to wear, ladies' clothes. No, no, they're not great, are they? Yeah, I think that's probably one of my biggest bugbears. Um, is, is fine. It's either a really short skirt or sort of dowdy old shorts, and I'm like, well, what's it going to be? I need the in-between. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But mm. I, guess I, I just love um, just normal workout tights that have got pockets in them because then I can put my phone because I have – um, golf pad on there mm. so you know I've got my shots in and, and the other pocket it's got my tea and a spare ball <laughs> yeah yeah yep. so I've got everything in my pockets yeah it's I mean that is it's I think golf that's changing too you know um even a few years ago I don't think you could rock up to a golf course in active wear and leggings but you know you can now really yeah um Some of the um professionals playing you know, in, in active wear. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, Look at the Ryder Cup. They were wearing hoodies. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> it is changing, isn't it? It is mm. definitely changing from, um, you know, the old age of golf. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I think you're off to nine holes. Nine, play nine holes? Are you going to play? Yep, yep. Going to go and play nine with my brother. So he, this will be his first full nine back in a very long time. He actually got a golf injury. Um, and had to have major surgery. He ruptured a disc in his neck. Oh, Jesus. Um, so he's he's going to be a bit off form, and I feel like I will be too. Thank you, COVID. So I live in an apartment, so I can't swing a ball around oh, um, here, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, we're going to go and have nine, and um, it'll be
nice to catch up and yeah it's a beautiful day so really yeah, happy. absolutely awesome well you enjoy that and um you know don't don't be too competitive with your brother but it probably <laughs> thing, right that's right that's right cool appreciate your time no worries thanks for having me